Are you ready to take off like a rocket in 2021? Well, let's start the countdown and stay tuned. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And if you're somebody like me and you see an article that says strategies to effortlessly achieve your goals, that's one that you want to read. And I read such an article by a gentleman named Patrick Edblad, and I want to share that with you because it was very, very good. And this will help you to propel yourself like a rocket in the year 2021. You know, every day you face a continuous stream of choices. And together, the choices you make affect the trajectory that your life is going to take. Now, Jim Rohn, who was the mentor for Tony Robbins, said, and I quote, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day, while failure is simply a few errors in judgment repeated every day. It is the cumulative weight of our, disi of our disciplines and our judgments that lead us to either fortune or failure. First, you know what? Everyone talks about discipline. Let me give you my definition of discipline. Discipline is doing something that you know is going to move you forward. That's good discipline. It's not something that you do naturally. It's something you thought about and said, I need to do this. As an example, if you want to be a marathon runner, you're going to go out and run. All right? You can't just like show up for the race. So you know that you have to have the discipline of getting yourself into shape. Discipline is not a natural act. Discipline is something that you decide is going to move your cause forward. And if you consistently make good choices, you'll make remarkable progress towards your goals. But if you regularly make poor choices, your goals constantly are out of reach. Let's go with the first strategy, okay? The first one, now when I first started doing YouTube, I had to learn a few new terms. One of them was thumbnail, okay? It's not that, okay? It's the picture that you, you put to attract people to click on your video. Another one was algorithms. All right, the algorithm that YouTube uses is to determine how they're going, if they're going to suggest your video to other people. Obviously, that makes you more popular. Okay, I would never heard the term algorithm before, but I know it was there. What is an algorithm? It's a process or a set of rules to be followed in calculations or other problem-solving operations, especially by a computer. It's a process. That's what it is. Do you ever wonder, you know, do you ever have like a friend or an associate or somebody that you take a look at and you think to yourself, you know, he ain't so much or she ain't so much or they're not so smart or I'm smarter than they are and then wonder to yourself, why they're doing so well financially, why they're doing so well in life? The answer is they have discovered a process, an algorithm to take them from point B, from point A to point B. You know, uh, if you ever wondered how a Tesla can drive itself, the answer is algorithms, millions of them. But there are also more relatable everyday occurrences of algorithms. As an example, you're preparing a meal. All right, you, what's your algorithm? You set the table, you take out the ingredients, you figure out how much time it's going to need, you set the oven, on and on and on and on until finally you're wiping the dishes at the end or putting them in the dishwasher at the end. You have your own algorithms for different things. Are they productive? Much like computers, our minds respond very well to algorithms. So whatever goal you want to achieve, deliberately install the responses that are going to take you there. And if you have to think of yourself like a robot, then think of yourself like a robot. I know it seems silly, but it's a remarkably effective way of putting good choices on autopilot. On autopilot. Then you don't have to do any thinking. Next clue. Next strategy. Harness the power of compound interest. I know you've heard this story Hey, which would you rather have? I'll give you a penny 
now and we'll double it every single day for 30 days or I'll write you a check for three million dollars right now which would you rather have all right well most people would take the three million I know you've heard this story all right but it's but you're much better off taking the penny because on day 29 when you compound one cent two cents four cents eight cents and so on by the time you get to day 29 you have accumulated almost 2.7 million dollars and on day 30 you pull ahead and you're looking at 5.3 million dollars the compounding penny illustrates something that our brains have a hard time to grasp intuitively small improvements compound into massive changes over time and that's just as true in life as it is in finance whenever you make a choice like ordering a salad instead of a hamburger for lunch, that single occasion is not going to make much of a difference. But if you keep repeating that same choice over weeks, months, years, it will accumulate and compound into much, much more, won't it? So whenever you want to create a meaningful change in your life, forget about Herculean efforts. Instead, aim for small but consistent progress. And if you do, you allow compounding to work its magic. And over time, all of your small efforts will produce incredible results. Now, this next one from the author, this is, was my favorite part of the whole article. So I'm gonna pretty much read it to you. It's the strategy is called nudging. I love this. If you walk into a men's room at Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, you'll notice something peculiar. In each urinal, there's an image of a black housefly. And this isn't just some odd decoration. The authorities have put them there for a particular reason. It seems that men usually do not pay much attention to where they're aiming, which can create pretty much of a mess. But if they see a target, attention and therefore accuracy is much increased. After adding the flies to the urinals, cleanup has become significantly more manageable in the men's room at that airport. According to the economist who introduced the urinal fly idea, these simple etchings reduce spillage by 80%. So if you don't want to be walking around in, well, I'll, I'll let you finish that one. Okay, now that's a remarkable result and a great illustration of the power of nudging. A small, simple, and inexpensive change to the environment that increases the likelihood that people, that you will make certain choices or behave in a particular way. And the beauty of nudging is it allows you to make smarter decisions and take better actions without even thinking about it. You simply shape your environment and then let your environment shape your decisions. Some examples, well, if you want to start flossing, put some pre-made flosses in the cup next to your toothbrush. Toothpaste, toothbrush, excuse me. If you want to practice the guitar more, put a guitar stand next to your living room couch. If you want to lose weight, store away the big plates and just serve yourself on salad plates. You get the idea. Create an environment that is going to enhance your process. Good choices don't necessarily require strong willpower. A lot of the time, all you need is a slight nudge in the right direction. So take a look at your environment and ask yourself, how can I make good choices and bad choices? How can I make good choices easier and bad choices more difficult? In other words, take that chocolate and put it on a real high shelf so you're not, not, you're not nibbling on it. The last one we want to talk about is utilizing positive peer pressure. Behavior is highly contagious. We constantly infect each other with our attitudes, our feelings, and our actions. You see that in school, Eli, all right? And just listening to a group of teenagers talk or a group of businessmen talk, they have the same language. They use the same expressions. The gentleman that I know who's significantly younger than I, you know, he, he and I like to talk about different restaurants we went to. So, and he's like, I don't know, 21, 22. 
these eyes. He says, oh, I went to this restaurant. I said, oh yeah, what was, how was it? He goes, it was fire. Well, that means there's something a little different to him than it means to me, but I am able to understand what he's talking about. He's saying that's a pretty neat thing. Every generation has their own little sayings, you know, And but the key thing is, you become like the persons that you associate with the most. The most. So what you want to do is not make that a negative, but make it a positive. Choose a workout partner. Get yourself somebody that you work out with that you're responsible to, and he or she is responsible to you to give results. That's putting making a positive out of peer pressure. So whenever you want to create a change in your life, make sure to establish positive peer pressure around it. Surround yourself with people that you want to be like, and your behavior will adapt to their behavior. Quick summary, things to go over. One, algorithms. Get yourself a process, a good process, a winning process that's going to make you better, help you achieve your goals. Compound, make small consistent progress and you get and you'll get tremendous results. Remember, when you get to that edge, it's like jumping off a cliff. You've accumulated, you've accumulated, you've accumulated, and then boom, you're the man. Nudging, design your environment to make sure that you're making good choices and bad choice, make good choices easy and bad choices hard. And finally, conformity, find people that you want to conform with so that you will be making really good choices. All right, once again, want to give a huge shout out to Patrick Edblad, E-D-B-L-A-D, tremendously good article, I got a lot out of it. And because we're never gonna end a meeting on a philosophical note, Let's start the new year right. Get out there and take charge. I'm Eli's dad.